up. What? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> What's going on guys? Rusty R1 here. I wanted to do a little video today about um, the buying process on uh, buying a motorcycle. Whether it be your first motorcycle or uh, your first private sale or something and you, you're just curious about the process. I wanted to go through that with you guys and uh, I'll go ahead and explain everything. But uh, what are you doing, man? Just chill. Hold your horses. We got cops, cops, cops. Oh, damn. Two of them, too. That's so the first step in the buying process would be to figure out how much money you're willing to spend. And once you figure out how much, much money you're willing to spend, you need to find out what bike you want. And also another bike that you'd want. So, because when you have a price range set up where you're looking for a good deal, as in you don't have that much money, but you're trying to get a good bike for that much money, it's a little hard to find that good deal. So what you want to do is set up a price range and then set up, have a variety of bikes that you would, you, you would like. Like for instance, when I was looking at buying this R1, I had, I was, it was either between an 09 plus R1 or a uh, 09 plus uh, CBR 1000 double R. And between those two, uh, it really just came down to what I found the best deal on at the time. And uh, I got lucky and found this deal. But, you want to have multiple bikes that you like and you want to have a price range pretty much set in mind. So once you find that, you want to head out to, uh, you know, get on the computer. Uh, I personally use uh, two places to find my motorcycles and that's Craigslist, number one. And uh, number two would be Cycle Trader. Um, they have a pretty good selection. Uh, most of them are dealer bikes though, I will say. Uh, so you won't really be finding a good deal. Although, I know some friends that have bought from dealers and had great deals. But I have not had the chance to find a good deal at a dealer yet. So I won't talk about that. So once you find uh, a couple bikes that are in your price range, it started to get serious and you need to start contacting the sellers. Um, you know, once you contact the seller, make sure you let them know that you're very serious because there are a lot of tire kickers out there in the motorcycle world. Um, let them know how serious you are. Let them know that you have cash in hand and start talking to them about the price. I will say, do not start talking to them about the price until you've let them know how serious you are. Because usually immediately when you start talking out of uh, talking about price right out of the box, they're gonna turn you down and they're not gonna think you're very serious because that happens a lot. That happens a lot. I'm about to run into the bank real quick and then uh, I'm gonna continue this vlog. <laughs> Okay guys, so you've talked to the guy about the cash, um, you've talked to him about the price, I mean, and next step is to seriously uh, set up a date to go check out the bike. And uh, you want to go check out the bike as soon as possible. Um, sometimes I even do it that same day that I contact them. Uh, that's actually how I bought this bike. Uh, same day I talked to him about if the bike is still available and everything, I set up a day, set up a time to go meet him and go talk to him about it. 
So, uh, so once you're there and you meet up with the guy and you're talking to him, you check out the bike. The first thing, the very important thing you need to do is when you're looking at the bike and you love it and you become overwhelmed with emotions and everything, the thing you need to remember is not to show that emotion. Do not show that you love this bike. Do not show that. That's the last thing you want to do because if you do all that, your hopes of lowering the price even more has gone down the drain. Because this guy knows that you already agreed on a price, you came out there, all the way out there, looked at the bike, and you're in love with it. There's absolutely no way you're not going to walk away with uh, without not paying that asking price that he, you agreed on. Um, there's no way. But if you calm and you're checking out the bike and you it doesn't seem like you really care too much about what happens, then you can go ahead and buy. Uh, you can. I'm sorry. Then you can go ahead and uh, try lowering the price even more at that point. Once you decide it's the bike you want to have. But a couple of checks that you should run once you get there is check out all the fairings, check out the VIN, make sure everything matches up before you go check out the bike. Get the VIN number, run a Carfax on it. I'm telling you that is so important because I was actually uh, looking at an R1 the day that I sold my R6. I had my eyes set on it, it was gorgeous, it was the price I wanted, great deal, but I, uh, when I went to go check it out, everything looked great. I could not tell anything was wrong with it. And I'm pretty good when it comes to this stuff. I had a friend go with me too, and we both couldn't tell. But um, when I was about to take the bike for a test drive, he mentioned, oh yeah, I never had the title put to my name. So that's great for you because you won't have to pay taxes on the bike. And that, in my mind, threw off a, a big red light. Like, that was a huge deal for me. So right then, I shut off the bike. I said, I'm not taking a test drive. I'm sorry. Don't want to disrespect you, but uh, I'm not ready to buy the bike today. I want to get out of here, and I want to uh, figure everything out. Because this guy was sketchy. He never registered the bike to him. The tag he rode on was not the tag for the bike. So I decided to put it on hold when I go, oh shit, stop sign. Um, when I decided to, uh, when I got home, I got the VIN number from him and I also had a picture of the title and I contacted some people and I, uh, I ran the VIN number on uh, Carfax, which it does work for motorcycles, guys. Um, I ran the VIN, turned out that the bike was fucking stolen at one point, it was recovered, then uh, it was an insurance total loss on it, it was terrible, it had like nine different owners, it had nine different titles on it, uh, terrible bike, I'm so glad I didn't buy it, but it's so important to run that Carfax, that's what I'm basically getting at. So once you run the Carfax, everything checks out. Everything gets a green light from you. Now it's only down to price. You haven't shown the guy you're overly excited. Um, it's down to price and you're out of there. So make sure you have cash in hand and you're, uh, so make sure you have cash in hand and then, holy shit, that was a big pothole. Um, like I said, so once you have the cash in hand, and now you're talking money. Now, if you've already talked to this guy about the price, it would be kind of rude to make him an offer lower than that, lower than what you offered. Uh, so when you when you try to bring him down even farther on price, make sure you include at the beginning, hey, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I know we agreed on the price. But is there any way you could do less than that? Uh, like a hundred or two hundred dollars less. Something small. And if you do that, usually, in my luck, it's worked fine. Usually they want to get it out of their hair so bad that they're not going to let you walk away. Uh, 
because of a couple hundred bucks or a hundred bucks. So, with that said, holy shit, this is, who goes? I guess it's my turn. I hope I'm going the right way. I don't think I'm going the right way. No, I'm not going the right way. God damn it. Fucking shit. I'm supposed to be going to the tag office right now, actually. How did I fuck that up? So once you talk him down, or if he decides not to move off the price, just go ahead and buy the bike. You've already agreed on the price, it's fair. Um, so go ahead, buy the bike, and you're headed home now. You're all loaded up, and now what? You bought a bike, and now you want to go ride, right? Well. In the state of Georgia, it is not required for you to ha have a tag to ride a bike that you just bought. In the state of Georgia, you have like what used to be 30 days. Now I believe they moved it down to five days. So you only have five days to ride around with no tag as long as you have the bill of sale on you and proof of insurance, which isn't that bad. You just, uh, you get a piece of paper from insurance emailed to you, print it out, and you have proof of insurance. That's what I'm currently doing right now. And then you got, and also in the state of Georgia, when you go get your tag for your new bike, you got to pay a sales tax on it, even though it's private sale. So um, that's another thing to keep in mind, guys. It kind of sucks. I was kind of upset when I found that out. It's 6.7% now. So whatever, 6.7% of whatever the state values the bike. It doesn't matter what you paid for the bike. It's whatever the state values it, which is usually lower than what the value is. Like, uh, like usually lower than what you'll pay for the bike. So it's not too bad, but you know, it's, it's, it sucks for people that, uh, you know, flip cars and flip bikes, you know. You can't really do that anymore. It's well, you can, but it's a lot harder to make a good profit. Also, another thing, guys, for test drives, you definitely want to test drive the bike. That's no doubt about it. You definitely want to test drive the bike. And when you do, do not let them hold the cash. That is just such a stupid thing in my mind to do. Why would you? Give somebody fucking cash, cash money, no records, for something that's not yours. You're going to test drive this guy's bike, you're about to buy it if everything goes well, and you gotta give him fucking $8,000 cash for, him, for you to ride the bike? Fuck no. I've never had to give anybody cash for any of the test drives I had to do. That never works like that, and I never will. That does not make sense. What if I give the guy cash and he goes in his house and says, oh, what cash? You didn't give me any cash. You know, that could happen. That's scary as shit. It's a lot of money. You gotta be careful with your money. Don't show the guy that you have cash until you're done. So yeah, it's not a big deal. Just don't make, just be careful with your money. Don't be giving out money for a test drive. That's stupid. But, um, you know, there's a lot of trustworthy guys out there, but there's also not a lot of trustworthy guys out there. Like the guy that I was going to buy that uh, other R1 from, you know? He was not honest with me at all. He told me everything was clean on that bike. Everything was great. But, you know, I ran the Carfax. He didn't say that. Everything was dirty about that bike, for sure. And, uh... You know, unfortunately, you meet those kind of people. But, you know, a lot of times you don't. A lot of times people are very honest and they don't play games with you. So I hope that helps, guys. I'm actually going to the tag office right now to get my uh, tag for the R1. So uh, I'll see you guys later. Rusty R1 out.